Okay, we've been here with Dean Cruz, hearing a lot of the stories about the, the auction and how the, the classic car industry really got started, the auction business. So tell us a little bit more about, you know, it got very competitive because so many people were doing classic car yeah. auctions. So kind of where did it go from, from the heyday there? Well, we, uh, we had a lot of people, the market was going up so fast that there'd be a guy coming by 10 auctions and pay, I mean 10 cars at the auction and pay a million dollars and sell them three months later for a million and a half. So what they were doing was they were writing a check and say you hold this check for a week but they were making us hold it for 30, 60, 70 days mm -hmm. and then the car market broke a little and it got tough. Okay. So we didn't know what to do to keep everything going so uh, I saw in the newspaper that ITT International Telephone Telegraph owned an auction company up in Minnesota. Hmm. I couldn't believe it, but they sold heavy equipment, big earth movers and bulldozers. And so hmm. I called them up and talked to a guy and I asked him if they might be interested in getting into car business. He said, I've heard about you guys. And I said, well, we're a little short on cash and I'd like to know if you're interested. So we had a meeting and we made a deal. So for probably five or six, seven years, we were Cruise ITT, no, we were ITT Cruise hmm. International. They put their ITT logo in front of us. Hmm. And of course, they were a multi billion dollar company. We had all the money we wanted for anything. And it went pretty good. And we did that for quite a while. And then they uh, decided they wanted to get out of the auction business. So they got out of the heavy equipment auction business and they got out of the car business. And I bought it back from them at that time okay. for 10% what I sold it to them for. Hmm. So then we go along another probably eight or ten years and the cars are getting higher priced all the time. So when we used to sell maybe seven, eight million a year, we're starting to sell 150, 250 million a year. It's getting to be a big operation. I'm a farm boy from Indiana and we're running this operation. Well, we got a call from California and this guy said, uh, I'm from uh, eBay. I said, yes, I didn't ever, I never heard of eBay. I said, you ever heard of it? I said, no. They said, well, we're one of the biggest companies in the world that sells things on the internet. I said, well, I've never used the internet. I don't even know what it is. Well, he said, it's a new coming thing. And he says, we sell uh, Lopez, or what do they call those things? That, oh, the Pez? The yeah, Pez they said, yeah, we're the largest sellers of them, but he said, we can't make any money. They want to bring like five or seven dollars, you know, and he said, we want to get into bigger items. We'd be in it, but we're making a lot of money. He said, last year, I don't know what it was, they made like 15, 20 million. Mm -hmm. And they said, we're, uh, now they're making a billion. Mm -hmm. But they said, we, we're interested in getting in bigger items. We'd like to maybe buy your company. Mm -hmm. Would you come out here? And I said, yeah, I will. So I went out there and uh, well, I actually, my wife went with me and my secretary for 40 years, Diane Jernigan, and uh, one other person, I uh, can't remember who it was, but we all went out there and we met in a boardroom. And uh, first meeting we had was with this guy from eBay that actually owned part of it. And uh, his name will come to me, it's slipping me right now. But anyways, he, told us I want you to meet Meg Whitman. So they brought Meg Whitman in and she talked to us and she said, well, I just want to tell you flat out, we want to buy your company. I said, thank you. Never said how much or anything. So then uh, they started bringing in their, one of their head marketing people and, they, and every one of them when they got ready to leave said, oh, we're interested in buying your company. So uh, we got a knock on our door and uh, Simon Rothman, he was the man. Simon Rothman, Simon Rothman, well, I'm not sure that was his name. Anyways, uh, he called me over, the, Jeff Skoll. Jeff Skoll owned half of eBay. He owned half, of, Simon Rothman was his marketing manager. Anyways, <laughs> Jeff Skoll was this little guy, weighed about, about your size, weighed about 125 pounds, he'd go like this, open the door like this, so I went out in the hallway. He said, Dean, we've talked it over. We want to buy your company. How much do you want? I thought, geez, I don't know. You know, it's probably worth 15, 20 million. And I thought, well, I, I don't know. He said, well, I, I said, what will you give me? He said, no, you tell me what you want. And uh, <laughs> of course, they made millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, billions. They were in a billion dollar company. And so uh, 
He did that three times to me. So I went back in, I sat down, I thought, if he does that again, I'm gonna give him a prize. I'm gonna ask him so much that I'd probably scare him away, but he might offer me half or something. So he said, uh, called me out, he says, how much do you want? I said, well, I, I got a number. He said, what is it? I said, 125 million. I could hardly keep a straight face. <laughs> he said, okay, anything else you want? And I just got goosebumps all over my whole body. I just got chills. I thought, what do you mean this guy wants to give more? And oh, how did I, anyways, I said, well, uh, I'd like to have you employ me. How much would you want? I said, 250 grand a year for at least maybe five, six years, help you get it going. I said, that'll be all right. Anything else you want? And I'm thinking, what in the world else do I want? I said, well, what about stock options? Well, he said, how many would you want? I said, how many could I have? He said, well, give me a number. I said, maybe a million shares? Yeah, it's all right. Never said no to a thing I asked. Afterwards, I thought how dumb I was. I should have said 200 million, this and that. He'd have probably said yes to everything. He's really a nice man, really nice guy. I, I learned to like him very much. So anyways, I said, that's a deal. So we shook hands and I said, what's the next move? He says, well, we'll come out and go over your books. Do you have, do you have them audited? I said, no, I'm a one owner guy. Why would I audit all my books and spend all that money? I don't. He said, well, we got to have it. We're a public company. So he said, I'll send out some accountants. So Pete Barnick and Mitchell, I think it was one of the biggest accounting firms in the country, they sent like 20 people to my office and they took the whole top floor of my office. We all moved out of there and they worked for 30 days and went back like seven or eight years and give a certified statement for everything we ever did up to that point and stamped it and had it. Uh -huh. I, mean, I couldn't believe it. They were all running all over. You got this, you got that. They're going through all of our drawers, <laughs> doing everything everywhere. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so anyways, they had that and I thought, well, they probably won't buy it now, but they did, they bought it. And so uh, they said, now, Dean, where do you want the closing? I said, well, probably Fort Wayne, Indiana, we can get a bank, bank building uh, with a big office, uh, closing office. I said, okay, let me pick the date. They said, now, who's your lawyer? I said, well, I don't have one. They said, you don't have a lawyer? And I said, no. I called several big law firms, they all wanted several million dollars. I thought, I don't need a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, Dean, you've got to have a lawyer. I said, why, can't I trust you? Mm -hmm. Oh, you can trust us, absolutely trust us. I said, well, if I can trust you, what do I need a lawyer for? Mm -hmm. And so uh, they said, well, we can't close. I, I will not let us close. We're a public company without a lawyer. So I called up this big firm in Indianapolis. They wanted three million. I called up a big firm in Fort Wayne. They wanted a million. I got to thinking one night, I thought, well, why wouldn't I get my brother David to do it? Mm -hmm. So I went over and talked to David, who's a lawyer, and he said, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. I said, what about your son, Andrew? He graduated from law school a month ago. <laughs> he said, uh, I don't give a hoot of it if he wants to do it. And so I went to Matt, or Andrew, mm -hmm. and I said, uh, Andrew, how much you charge me to do a, do a closing? Well, oh, I don't know, you know, a few hundred bucks an hour, maybe 200 an hour. I said, well, this one will take maybe five, six hours. That'd be a thousand bucks. I'd say, what if I gave you three grand? Mm -hmm. Oh my, he just got out of law school. He didn't even own a home. He said, oh, that would be, oh, Dean, you don't need to pay me that much, Uncle Dean. I said, no, I will. Mm -hmm. he, he said, okay, we shook hands. He says, you want to know what it is? He says, yeah, what, what deal is it? And I said, well, I'm selling my company to eBay public company. Oh, I can't do that. I won't do that. Oh my, there was no, th no way I could do that. I said, well, would you do this? Would you just sit by me at the closing table? And if I ask you a question, just say yes or no. And if you don't know, say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. He had sweat broke out all over. He said, I guess 3,500. I said, yeah, 3,500. He says, I'll do that. So we go to Fort Wayne at this bank building, we go up in the office and we're sitting there and uh, they said, where's your lawyer? Andrew's sitting with me, you know, he's a young kid, about 25. <laughs> I said, right here. They got five big time lawyers from big law firms all over <laughs> Chicago, California. They're sitting there and they said, how long have you been practicing law, Andrew? He said, a week. 
<laughs> they said, look, Mr. Cruz, I don't know what you're trying to pull here, but I can tell you, we're not going to do this. We, we need a seasoned lawyer from a big firm. I said, why? Well, you just need to you for yourself. I mean, think about it. This is millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. We're giving you 130, 128 or $30 million. I mean, that's a lot of money. You need a big firm. I said, no, I checked with them. They want three or four million. I'm doing it just like this. Can I trust you? Are you an honest lawyer or are you a scumbug? Oh, no. He said, we all, we're honest lawyers. I said, then close this bad money deal now. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, we will. So they closed it. I paid 3500 attorney fees. So that was the best deal of my life I ever made. Yeah. And Andrew got a big thing there to, to, yeah. <laughs> to brag about. Yeah. <laughs> first job. Yeah, first deal he ever had. First yep. deal yeah. of hundreds of millions of dollars. He'll never forget it. Yeah.